Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today. You get messy hair, no makeup, Megan. Um, and that's okay, you won't have to look at me for very long. Today's video is kind of a video, but not really. Um, so I had the pleasure of speaking with two wonderful women um, who are Christian witches. And to protect their privacy and because they asked, um, this episode of the podcast was audio only, so subsequently the video is audio only as well. So what I did instead is there's some pretty b-roll for you to look at if you choose to or you can just plug your headphones in or just listen along. Um, before we move into the interview though, I have an announcement. I know a couple of you have been asking me about a P.O. box. I now have a P.O. box. It is P.O. box 2191 in Sefner, Florida. I will put it in the description for this video. It will also be in the description of every video moving forward. You can write me letters, you can send me postcards, whatever you want. I will try to respond to everyone that I get. But without further ado, let's move into the interview. So thank you so much for joining me today. I have Asasia and Kat on, and we are going to be having sort of an open, candid conversation about Christian witchcraft from some Christian witches. So thank you so much, Asasia and Kat, for being here with me today. Thank you. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. So, um... I don't know who wants to go first up and maybe give a little bit of information on who you are, um, your practice. I guess I should mention that I found you both on Twitter. I asked if anybody would be interested in speaking about Christian witchcraft and you both responded. So now that that's out of the way, who would like to give sort of an introduction about themselves? Um, huh? I can go. <laughs> okay. Um. So I haven't been into the craft very long, so I'm not super like advanced or anything, but I was just having some really hard troubles in my life, and I've always been religious, like growing up and everything, my whole family, and it just didn't really feel like it wasn't not enough, but I felt like there was more and I wanted to explore everything that I could. And I really enjoy practicing, even though I haven't done very much. It's really <laughs> nice to me. Okay, well, everybody has to start somewhere. It still takes courage to step out of your comfort zone. Um, what about you, Kat? Um, so I also, haven't, I also haven't been practicing a terribly long time. Um, I started actually practicing the craft about a year ago, or a little bit over a year now. Um, I always have been interested in um, witchcraft and the occult, and I've always been a Christian from birth. And I, when like my exploring and looking into both, I, I notice a lot of similarities between the two, and. Um, I decided on my own that I was going to mix the two together. And then after doing some more research, I found out that it's actually a thing <laughs> to do the craft and be Christian. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. But it sounds like you both came from very, you came from a little bit of a, a different place, but you have found a, a common path. Um, so how did you end up finding witchcraft? Was it through like pop culture or online, like Twitter and social media, or was it something that maybe you were just drawn to and you found a word for it? Um, for me, honestly, I think it started with my interest in Ouija boards. I got one when I was 13. Um, my grandmother, she practiced and I didn't know because my mom didn't like any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, she got me my first Ouija board. And from there, I kind of explored more into it. Um, they're not entirely like linked or anything, but it was just something so different from what I was used to that it got me into other things. 
That's so interesting. I think you're the first person that I've heard say, oh, I got into witchcraft because I got a Ouija board. (laughs) (laughs) I I got into it through the pop culture side Mm -hmm. of it. I used to watch a lot of anime growing up and there's like, you know, Sailor Moon, Card Captor Soccer, like a lot of the old school magical girl ones. Mm-hmm. And from then I just remember like being younger and like, oh yeah, I have this spell, I have that spell. And that's kind of like what sparked my, I, like, I know that like sparked my interest really early on. And mm-hmm. then learning more about like my family's background and like the herbal medicines and mixing and the different superstitions. So that's kind of always been there. And then I think I sort of evolved from that. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people are like that too, finding witchcraft through pop culture, because for myself, you know, I grew up, um, I watched a little bit of Sailor Moon, but my thing was more of like Charmed and Buffy and oh, Practical Magic and different shows like that. So definitely you're not alone in finding witchcraft through pop culture. It is very popular. <laughs> Charmed, Charmed was my favorite show. Yes. I was like, I loved it so much. I have watched every single episode of every single season at least twice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I... I would like always, if it was on, I was in front of the TV. Just it, always. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess one of the, one of the first things that I really want to talk about is how witchcraft and Christianity can work together. Because as someone who is on the outside looking in, Um, I have a very surface level understanding of Christianity. I went to church as a kid, um, off and on, you know, I never really read the Bible. I knew like the 10 commandments and different things like that, but there was always sort of this understanding in air quotes, uh, understanding that Christianity and witchcraft were opposites that they couldn't work together. And now being online and seeing the variety of people and the way that they practice their craft, I obviously know now that that's not necessarily the case. How, how do the two work together for you? Because of, um, oh, what is it? That, that Bible verse, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live or whatever it is. Um, see my my surface level understanding is very apparent right now um how do they work together for you I hope that question makes sense yeah it does because um I grew up like strictly Christian like my whole family and all that so like my mom didn't even want me to have a Ouija board or anything like that she was like you're gonna get into like that stuff, and I always cry and think, it's okay, it's okay, come on, but, um, I was kind of nervous, because she had always been that way about it, um, and I definitely messed up, like, a few times, just, I thought, I had practiced a little bit before, but I was like, you know, it just doesn't seem like it's going to do anything. It feels weird. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't what I was used to. But after really like opening up to it and doing everything properly and taking my time, um, like simple things, like when I pray, Mm -hmm. it's to God, it's to the universe, deities, I work with all of it. And that's what feels better than just being closed off to one thing. I hope that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah. And, and what I about think, for you, Kat? I think mine, it's sort of a similar thing. Um, I view it as God is the creator. He created everything, the moon, the sun, the stars, the planets, 
the crystals, the rocks, the gems that we use. He created all of that. And in the beginning of the Bible, when he created it, he gave man dominion over all of that. Mm -hmm. So why would he give us all of these things and then not let us use it? And even, um, I, I don't remember the exact verses because numbers really confuse me in that way, but I remember the stories. <laughs> That's okay. And <laughs> there's quite a few stories in the Bible where they actually use, if you really think about the story, the North Star that they followed to find Christ. That is astrology. Mm -hmm. um, there's a point in time where there's a battle and I believe, I don't remember who was in the battle, but there's a battle in the Bible where um, the Lord told him, I will stop the sun in the sky. And the sun stopped and they were able to have, I think it was like three days worth of daylight. Um, but there are all these signs of them following different signs in the in the earth and in the sky, even um, the giving of an offering, that was something that was consistent throughout the Bible. So I find it sort of interesting that you wouldn't, that something that was so apparent in the Bible would be closed off to us now. So that's mm. kind of how I view it. He created it and we're allowed to use it. So I use it as a way of connecting to him. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense for me. Like if he, you know, he made it, so why would he make it for you not to be able to take advantage of it, right? Yeah. Um, so where where do you think, and this is just purely speculation and a question that popped up in my head, um, where do you think it came into that witchcraft and, um, you know, the offerings and all of that got tied back to the devil? Because when I was a kid and I was first exploring Wicca and witchcraft, um, I had told my mom about it and she was like, well, no, that's like, that's, that's devil worship. That's the work of the devil. Absolutely not. Like you can't do that. But is it though? Like, really, is it though? <laughs> so where do you think that came from? Um, I think quite a bit of it, like um, reading throughout like the Old Testament mostly and listening to different um, pastors speak on certain things that they act that was written in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was put there to diff like to differentiate um, the Israelites from the other tribes. Mm. So that's sort of my understanding of it. Some of the practices that the other tribes would do that weren't following God specifically, those rules were put in place so that they could stand out from those um from those other tribes okay so that sort of like sort of like a, um like it would only be the devil's work if you're not doing it in god's name yeah okay okay um did you have any thoughts on that yeah because like i think it's also a problem within the religious communities where you know, people use certain parts to justify their own um, discriminations, like homophobia and all that. Mm -hmm. and so it's I just like a, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it's just that, like, they think if you're not doing what the Bible means to them and what the religious community means to them, then you're just doing something wrong like it can't be right because their view is the only thing that can be that sounds about right 
<laughs> in my experience anyway, yeah. <laughs> with everything, with anything else. Yeah, that's true. And I think the Bible's been translated so many times. There are so many things that are lost in all of those translations. True. I, I think there was um, one person, I'll have to, I'll see if I can find the link and I'll put it in the description and in the show notes um, of someone who has studied several different translations over like decades and found that um, where it's talking about like man shall not lie with man and how it's not talking about uh, homosexuality it's actually talking about something else mm-hmm. um i'll see if i can find a link for that um so are you are you both um what you would consider out to the um any non-witch christians be it online or offline or is it a practice that you generally keep to yourself mine it's half out half in <laughs> Um, so like my immediate family doesn't know, um, okay. most of the people in my church don't know, but some of my outside friends who aren't in the craft, but are what I guess you consider Christian, they do know. Okay. So I guess the more open-minded Christians know that I, <laughs> but the more traditional ones don't. <laughs> um, what about you, Asasia? I rebelled against my parents so hard they don't even ask anymore. I mean, I still go to church. So I think she knows that I'm still, at least still like mostly Christian since I still go. Um, Other than that, she doesn't really ask questions. I relate to that a lot. Like some of the Mm -hmm. things that... (laughs) Some of the things that I have done and that I do and believe... My parents, even though I'm almost 30, they're just like, you know, we don't even bother asking anymore and we don't bother understanding because it's not, you know, it's just, (laughs) they don't care as long as I'm happy and, you know, obviously not hurting anybody. So I really relate to that statement. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like for now, they're just like, you really still like collecting rocks and candles, don't you? Like all the pretty things. (laughs) yeah yeah no problem (laughs) my boyfriend thinks it's kind of cute like he doesn't really know what I do but I yelled at him for lighting one of my spell candles and he was like it's just a candle I was like it's not even scented you don't need to touch it yeah (laughs) yeah um so if you're comfortable would you mind sharing like um a daily practice that you have or um, how you stay connected, basically, to your craft and your faith? Um, I still pray every day. Um, It was what I was taught to do, and I still do it, just in a different way. Um, I'm really new. I like practicing new things, and I try to read a lot about everything because I'm just so interested in the whole thing Mm -hmm. and I don't want to be not like held back necessarily uh to one thing I like to try to do everything that resonates with me as much as I can so that's just where I'm at right now okay do you have like a specific prayer that you say or is it just um just a general prayer like you're just talking to God um it's usually general to um not only God but like the universe and uh guardian angels um because I started learning more about guardian angels specifically first and um on Christmas actually Uh, My boyfriend's stepmom gave me a reading after I had gone through something kind of hard for me, and she pulled six guardian angel cards um, in my reading, and she was shocked. (laughs) 
And she's like, I can't, I can't even believe this. Like you got six guardian angel cards. That's incredible. And so I really like exploring more of that too, because I had to open myself up to that more and it really helped me. What about you, Kat? If you're comfortable sharing. Um, I do pray as well every day. Um, it's more of a, like a general prayer um, to God, the universe, my ancestors, my guardian angels, my guides. Um, I also have a little incense that I mix together and I will light that. It's like right in my room. So I kind of light it. It's on my little altar setup. I light that and that's sort of like my way of cleansing for the day and giving an offering um, of just peace and sort of clearing the energy for the day. Cool. It sounds like there are definitely commonalities um, between both of your practices and even my own um, because I worship Bridget, um, who is an Irish goddess and prayer definitely is a daily part of my practice. And I find that a lot of pagans um, shy away from that term because of a lot of their shadows with what they dealt with in um, churches or um, like heavily, I, I don't want to say Christian, but heavily like evangelical families where it's very, um, you know, uh, witchcraft is absolutely a no-go. Um, but definitely, I, I really like that you both talk so openly about prayers and who you pray to, because prayer is definitely a big thing for me as well. So someone had asked in my Discord if you work closely with the closely with the Christian God or angels and if you recognize any other deity um, not necessarily worship or work with but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like is the Christian God still the only God in your belief systems for me I see it as they're all they're all completely valid and connected to I guess what you would say what we consider the main the Christian God okay um, so like so like the um so like uh for example Bridget would be an aspect of the Christian God is that what you mean yes okay kind, I just want to make sure I'm understanding I see them more like I guess I would see them more like as angels okay I think is I don't exactly know the proper word that I'm looking for but the closest I can think of is like they're angels or um subsidiaries to it to okay the Christian God not like not really beneath them but they're the gods of the different nations and first people and different uh areas because looking at them every uh every aspect of the pagan community whether it's irish or um norse uh chinese african the different uh god systems that they have all govern the same or similar principles or elements mm -hmm. and it's the same with like the angels as well so I see them as they all work together <laughs> they're all I guess yeah they all work together it's just okay. they each govern a different area of the earth so maybe a good universe. analogy would be like um the Christian God is like the boss, 
right? And all of these, the other gods are like uh, assistant managers. And then we are the people. Yeah. Like kind of like a hierarchical, hi- I can't say that word, a hierarchy <laughs> of deities. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. I think I, think I understand where you're going with that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure that I've, I got it straight in my head because if I can understand it, then anybody can understand it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's kind of like that, like a hierarchy. Okay. So you don't say that they don't exist. It's no. uh, like you have your the Christian God and then the rest of them that they are there and you acknowledge that they're there. Yeah. They're, I okay. believe that they're hundred percent existent and real and have their own powers okay cool um what about you Asasia? um i do agree i think the christian god is equal to all of them and um they just all serve their own purpose to the person worshiping them those are really interesting thoughts because it reminds me of kind of like how deity is viewed within Wicca because you have a god and a goddess and then um, you see some Wiccans pick out like a matron or a patron or they will pray to these deities that you know they don't necessarily have a relationship with because they view them as aspects of the one divine source. So it's it's interesting that there are similarities there between how you both view the pagan gods and the Christian god versus how some soft polytheists view deities as well. Yeah, I think when I was doing like my research and like, well, not really research, but more my reading and I noticed that and I was like, they're really similar. They why are. is there so much, like, why is there so much hatred between the two? Like, we're the same <laughs> like we're basically the same it's just we use a different word to describe things right um so going into that conversation um do you both still hold the concepts of heaven and hell are those still parts of your belief system or is it something different? I do believe in both aspects okay. still. I also believe in both. Um, I don't necessarily think it's just like heaven has God and all the angels and like, you know, the stereotypes about them. They're probably a lot different from what we might learn about them generally, but pretty much similar they're still there okay um and then someone else had asked what the role of the bible plays in your practice because i'm somewhat familiar with psalms i believe is how you say it and there are people who say that psalms is just a book of spells which I, I have no knowledge on any of that. So I don't want to misspeak. Um, do you, either of you know any information on the Psalms or do you use Psalms in your practice? How does, how does all of that play together for you guys? Sorry, my kitten's knocking around a water bottle. Um, Are you okay? I think they're totally right. Um, I never realized it, but a lot of them, you know, just like manifesting in spell work, they feel like you're just reinforcing something and it makes you feel better almost. Like like prayers too. They are just kind of uplifting and I do think they help with manifestation in the same way. They just have their own specific name to them. Okay. I um, I see them the same way as Asasia sees it. It's they're useful in learning how 
people back then or the people in the Bible used to communicate and how they communicated with God and the angels and using it as a tool of manifestation and also guidance as to how I move forward in my practice. Um, I do definitely believe that Psalms is a spell book <laughs> um, <laughs> because like reading through it, it's like, huh, okay. It's definitely like really something that is very, man like really aids in manifestation. And even within my church, at least, I do see them like say different verses in Psalms or different chapters in the book of Psalms, um, using it as, they don't call it a manifestation tool, but using it in the same way that people in the craft would use manifestation verses or mantras. Hmm. Uh, so I guess I should ask really quick, just to make it clear for myself, um, do you, do either of you have like a specific denomination of Christianity that you uh, subscribe to, or is it just, just a general Christianity? Um, I, I don't know if I really, if I really align myself with it because I do, or if I align myself with it because that's just what I was born into and that's all I really know <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I do identify with the Pentecostal um, church and one of the main differences one of the main um, features of the Pentecostal church is uh, speaking in tongues and uh, I guess to quote the stereotype would be the catching the Holy Spirit okay that aspect of it Okay. And what about you, Asasia? Um, I take what resonates basically, just like how you do with certain things in witchcraft. I take what resonates and what feels right and then kind of just leave out the rest, like the toxic things where, you know, the homophobia and everything. Because that is what made me try to get away from it too. All the judgment that can come along with it. Um, right. But mm -hmm. other than that, like church mm -hmm. and the prayers, it feels right. So I use it along with everything else. Okay. Yeah. So you're more of like an eclectic Christian. Yes. Does that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that would be like the right term, but it is a term that I know that we use in the witchcraft community when you don't really have a specific path or tradition. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so within the pagan and witchcraft communities online, there tends to be a lot of, I think earlier, Kat, you said hatred uh, between the two groups of like pagans and witches versus the Christians, um, which is I think fairly, fairly ridiculous on a surface level. Um, mm -hmm. So are you, are you both in the communities online, like the witchcraft communities online? I am on um, Twitter, but Twitter's pretty much the only thing I use. Okay. I am on Twitter and Instagram. I do a little bit of the witch talk community, but it's a lot, so I don't go on there that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd say mostly the Twitter and the Instagram side of it. Okay. Now, the only reason that I ask is because I wanted to get your opinion or your thoughts um, and someone else asked this too in my Discord about um, how you feel about witches and pagans that really harp on Christianity and 
you know, talk, they talk bad about it or um, do try to steer people away from it. I've seen that too. I, I personally, I don't agree with it. I have my own sort of shadows and uh, not necessarily traumas, but my own issues that I am actively working through because of my experiences with the church and stuff growing up. Um, but that's my own, you know, that's my own personal crap that I have to move through. How do you feel about that happening? And, and what do you think that we can do together as like two different communities to work through that and get rid of it? I know that's a really heavy question. So if, you, if you're not comfortable answering or you need a second to think. That was like one of the first things I saw when I joined, like when I followed all of the people that I do to learn about witchcraft was um, a mutual that I really like and I learned a lot from her, but she had uh, been tweeting a lot about just bashing Christianity and I made my own tweet and I was like, I understand where people come from completely because there are a lot of things wrong within that community but just like with every religion you shouldn't you should try to not just generalize everyone and everything about it Uh and like I said I think it's okay to resent it for trauma purposes and everything like that like I understand it's definitely hard though being both and seeing a lot of uh, people in the witch community resent it so much because it feels not directed at me but like I do it so it just hurts my feelings a little bit but it's okay (laughs) (laughs) I yeah I completely am I'm with you there I think if we can't look at it objectively and see like the history of Christianity and what happened in the name of Christ and things from way back when, you can't really grow if you don't acknowledge that it happened. But at the same time in the modern day, like the the crusades aren't a thing anymore. And I think that we could come together through commonalities and understanding with each other and not hate on each other anymore. (laughs) Yeah, I think it feels so weird seeing like being in both and then seeing both bash each other. It's like, but we can live in harmony look at me or look at Asasia like it can live in harmony it's totally okay right Um, like you're not alone you're not an outlier there is an entire community of Christian witches there's an entire community of Christ uh Christo pagans so I mean like you're not some lone person just doing what you want It's, it's a whole community Exactly. And I think, I do think a lot of the trauma that people face within the church is definitely um, a huge part of why they bash out against it so much. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's also important too to realize that the trauma didn't happen because of the church, but because of the people that go there. And um, I know a very common thing within um, my family, our culture is even the devil goes to church sometimes. So (laughs) not everybody that you meet in church is going to be someone that is actually reading the Bible or following the good non-judgmental parts of the Bible. They're just picking and choosing the parts that they like, if they even pick and choose the parts that they like. Right. I think separating the church from its people or from the bad people will 
probably help people not demonize Christianity on a whole. Just like when you first maybe learn about the craft, like you can choose like, you know, you can be an eclectic witch or green witch and there's a lot of different titles. So like when you pick a church, pick a religion, uh, not all of them are gonna be good or fit for you. And it's not necessarily the church, it's how it feels to you. And it's like she said, the people in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are very valid, very good points. Because I, there have been some churches that I have gone to where I'm just like, I don't like it here. And it really, it has nothing to do with, you know, the, the church itself. It's more of like the energy of the room and the people. Mm -hmm. And that there, there are some churches today where I'm like, yeah, I'll go to church. I like that place. It's cool. Because it's about the energy of the people there. And not necessarily, you know, uh, following the Bible to the T, taking it 100% literally, like some people like to do. Yeah. And, you know, I, one of the whole reasons of me wanting you guys to come on is because of the disparity between the communities and how you have some people say, you know, absolutely not, Christians can't be witches, coming from both sides, the Christians and the witches. And then both sides, again, they're like, no, that's, that's a valid path. And it's very ostracizing, I would think, um, for anybody following a Christian witch path, because you kind of have a foot in both paths. And I would imagine that sometimes it would be really hard to find out where you fit. Is that, yeah. does that resonate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you will always fit with me. Like you're awesome. welcome here. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's, so it's, go ahead. Oh, okay. It's just so weird being like, like I said earlier, half out, but not fully. Whereas like some people know, but then those that you're kind of closest to, like those that are on the Christian side, don't mm -hmm. fully know everything. But those that are on the craft side know everything. So it's like, ah, I feel so torn. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you feel like it's important to you and your path um, to be completely out and open with your question, with your Christian witchcraft, if, if not now, eventually to the people that you care about? Or is it simply a relationship between you and God? Hmm. I have thought about eventually being out, but then I'm also thinking it's it is still a personal relationship mm -hmm. that is between me and God and the universe and even Christian Christians don't share their full relationship with God with each other so at times I'm like I would love to but then at other times I'm like I don't have to because it's personal to me. Right. How about you, Asasia? For me, I think the only reason I really wouldn't is just because the people that I don't share it with, I don't for a reason, just because I know that they're going to criticize me and I just don't really want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. other than that, I don't really mind, like, being open about it. Um, it's nothing that I'm ashamed of, even though I know a lot of people do criticize it, but it's what feels right to me, and I think that's all that matters. That sounds just about right. I mean, for me, anyway. <laughs> I'm not saying, like, no, you're wrong. That's not what I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so we're coming up on um, almost an hour, I think, give or take. Um, so we can go ahead and start wrapping it up. I want to leave this um, last few minutes as sort of like an open invitation for both of you to say whatever you feel called to say to anybody that is listening about Christian witchcraft or anything. Um, because I know that it's very, you know, as we said earlier, it's ostracizing. You got both sides of it sort of fighting each other. And, you know, I've been guilty of being like, oh man, all those Christians, they stole all of our holidays. But, you know, as we, as we grow as people and we grow um, more confidently in our faith and our beliefs, I think we can all work together. So I'd like to hear if you, if either of you have anything that you'd like to share um, before we go. I think what I would, what I want to, sh to say is anyone that's interested in practicing and going down the path of Christian witchcraft or uh, Chris Christo paganism, that it is completely valid, regardless of what either side wants to say. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you're being led down that path, um, go for it. It you can always change if you want to. Um, it's not something that you're forced to do or that you're forced to stay committed to. Um, and just know that there are others out there. There's a whole community of us out there, mm -hmm. so you're more than welcome. Beautiful. And what about you, Asacia? Do you have anything that you would like to say? Uh, do your own thing. Fuck everyone else. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> it feels right. Do it. Um, it'll be hard to start out because especially if you're open about it too, I think, to like maybe a really religious family. Um, you don't have to let them know and it doesn't mean you're ashamed of it or anything just do whatever feels right and if you don't like it then you don't have to do it that's mm -hmm. really great advice so thank you both for uh sitting down and having this chat with me um I really appreciate you both again taking the time to come on and talk about your personal paths and Christian witchcraft in general. Um, maybe one day in the future, we can do more of a more of a deep dive into Christian witchcraft, because I think that would be very interesting and a very interesting conversation. Um, but for now, for now, this was this was really nice. I hope you both enjoyed sitting down and chatting as well. Um, would you both care to share your Twitter handles? And I can put those in the description and in the show notes. So mine is the Lunar Witch, T-H-E-E, -E, Lunar Witch. Um, that is my Twitter. And I think my Instagram is the same, but I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, we'll find it and I'll put a link. Um, yeah, my Instagram is the same. Cool. Mine is Asacia Baby, um, A S A C I A, um, and then another A because yeah, and just babe with an extra E. All right. Well, that is that is all. I guess we will talk to everybody soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for having me. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. I hope it was enlightening for you. I hope it gave you a new perspective and new things to think about. And definitely go follow them on Twitter and on Instagram. The links for their social media is in the description. And I will talk to you soon.
A special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon and get patron-exclusive perks and content, you can do so at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron.